to episode three of A Little Night Podcast, presented by the Northeast Stephen Sondheim Theatre. Tonight, I'm your host, Tim Jasper, and I'm joined by two incredible guests, both committee members, both lifelong Nest members, and both highly valued by me. Uh, we've got the incredibly talented and always warm-hearted Adam Donaldson, our company manager. Hello, Adam. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Excited I'm, to be here. I'm glad to have you, Adam. And uh, on my right-hand side on the Zoom meeting we're on right now is the always entertaining <laughs> and incredibly multi-talented Callum James Dunwell Entertainer. Good evening, Callum. Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right, yeah. Not bad. Good. Ready, I'm loving the haircut. It's great. Thank you. It's very the smart. came around and sat in the garden and did it. And I'm also loving the t-shirts as well. <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde the Musical, directed by Harry Elizabeth, md by Tim Jasper. I remember that well. Um, so tonight's episode is uh, a different one again in our series, um, and it's called The Hypotheticals. Um, so the two guests haven't been prepped on this, but what we're going to do is I'm going to pose a series of questions about two Sondheim shows, and basically I'm going to ask, what if, and then present a scenario. I'm just going to have a little chat about... What would happen if that scenario wasn't the same? Um, does that sound okay, guys? Sounds great. I yeah, think yeah. it'd be a good bit of fun and you know, lighthearted, easy listening is what the plan is. So let's uh, let's get the ball rolling with a quick warm up question, just to throw you off even more. And it's only a quick one. It is, what is your favourite Sondheim lyric? I'm intrigued to know. Uh, Adam, take it away. Um. I'm very vocal about what my favourite um, Sunday lyric is. Obviously, you know, being like a performer myself, uh, my favourite lyric is from Into the Woods. Uh, the Beta's wife in Moment in the Woods sings, let the moment go, but don't forget it for a moment, though. Oh. And I feel like that speaks volumes, like when you're, as a performer, because obviously you get so engrossed in the part that you're playing and who they are, the personality. And obviously when you come at the end of the show, you've got to let the moment go of you playing the part. But never forget it. It's always going to be in the back of your mind that you've played that part, you've had that experience, and it's going to take you somewhere else. And I don't know, that every time when I finish a show, I always think about that lyric, and I just feel more and more strongly after each show that I do that. I feel like it resonates with performers a lot, because obviously, yeah, you've had that experience, it's time to move on, but... Never forget that experience that you've had. It's always going to be there with you. So, yeah, that, that's my favourite lyric. I like that. It's good. I, I feel that from um, Sunday in the Park because I always look back on Sunday in the Park when we did that as our first show. And yeah. It was it was so special. But, you know, life goes does go on and Nest does keep growing. Um, so, yeah, it's good to move on, but also to look <laughs> back and remember well. Uh, Callum James Dunwell, have you got a favourite Sondheim lyric? Uh, I, yeah, I, I couldn't pick a specific lyric from the song but one of my all-time favorites is children and art all right i really love that i really I think it, that... It, it says a lot about uh sort of age and human beings as a whole i feel like it's so underappreciated that mm. song i feel like obviously yeah. it's hidden behind like sunday uh, putting it together finishing the heart yeah obviously sunday the part with george i feel like it's hidden behind all them but actually that I song's think it's one, one of the most best ones. Yeah, that one. Move on. I really like the lyrics to move on as well. I love it. It's gorgeous. I'll just quickly do mine if you want, because um, I find because I compo- I've been composing recently over lockdown, which you don't mention right now. Um, but a lyric that resonates with me is "Stop worrying if your vision is new. Let others make that decision. They usually do." And it means, like for me, it means that don't worry, don't try and impress people. Just write honestly yourself. And if they think it's new and great, fantastic. And if they don't like it, that's also that's fine. Like, it's an opinion on art. So that's just been working. I'd rather I'd rather have a an opinion, whether it be good or bad, than not have one at all. That is a good point. That's a good point. That I like that. Um, right. Well, let's get on with the hypotheticals. Our first ever hypothetical episode. And if it goes well, we might have more. And if it doesn't, <laughs> we still might have more because <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. So, question one for you guys to answer. Let's have a think about Into the Woods for a bit. And the first question I'd like to present to you is this: What would happen if? The baker couldn't find all the ingredients before the last midnight. So remember, he's looking for the cow, the cape, the hair, and the slipper. But if he can't find it before midnight, what would happen? Well, how would the show transpire? Callum, kick us off. 
Okay, before you start, jog my memory and jog everybody else's memory, the exact consequences of uh, what would happen if those items weren't found by the midnight. Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> I think it's something to do with the curse would not be broken. So they're trying what? to get those items to break the curse that they could have a child. That's um, right. So yes, I'm assuming it was something to do with the child. Yeah, yeah. So if they couldn't find them, I'm assuming that the witch would then not lift the curse, even though she could do that because she's a witch. But I think she wouldn't lift the curse on their barren state. Um, so let's just, let's just assume that is the case. That's the only yeah. consequence of that happening. So assuming assuming that the the cur- the curse would just be on the baker, wouldn't it? Really, because it was his father as to why the curse came about in the first place. I guess so. Does that mean the yeah. wife can get pregnant or not? Well, this is what I'm thinking. You see, would there be like an act two of the wife's sort of brief period of adultery? Oh, would that sort of carry on into act two because she's just that desperate for children that the poor old uh, baker who can't get his swimmers going, the wife runs <laughs> off. The wife runs off to have a child with somebody else. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a more adulterous route and she's going to try and stray from the married life even more than she does in the original show. Yeah, I agree I with that. Just be I... desperate to have a child. I feel that. It's a good... Do you think they might even consider, like, adopting little Jack and little Red? Little Jack's just called Jack, isn't he? But they might <laughs> they might try and take both of them if they, if they know they can't have children. They could, in a less yeah, morbid world, they might not. They might try and stick it out, you know. I still think she would um, have an affair with the prince. Why? Because if you think about it, um, do you know when Beta's wife and Cinderella um, collide in the woods? Obviously, they yeah. have the... Um, he's a very nice prince. Mm-hmm. He's, um, that little bit between them. But I'm sure, 100% sure, that she like bumps into the... Prince, one of them, yeah. and you can see the shock and like the admiration that she has for the prince. Yeah. So even... feel... Sorry, go on. No, go on, you finish point. That's all right. <laughs> no, <he's, laughs> um, so I feel like it's always going to be that kind of thing. Like, if the opportunity ever arose, she would do it. If if that makes sense, I feel like, and I feel like feeling the task would only strengthen that feeling that she would do it. Oh, so, so you I feel think like it would drive that wedge in and like really try and split them more? Well, yeah, because obviously the yeah. the arguing for most of the first act, even though they're finding the objects, which yeah. is pretty weird. So obviously, if they if they failed it completely, then yeah. that would just be a massive argument. I feel like and I feel that like that would just be her. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna go and do this. He's yeah. he's the man that I fancy. I'm going for him. <laughs> I always remember in the performance we did at Cumbria, um, Stevie was played um, Baker's wife came on, and you could see her lusting for the prince. Like even when she wasn't speaking to him directly, she was already like lusting for him. So mm. I think you're right. Yeah, she does see the prince even before they've got the items, and is already thinking, mm, "I want a bit of that." Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a good point. So there you go. That would, that's what would happen. They would probably be separated even earlier in the show. Yeah, act two is like they've got a divorce lawyer in, <laughs> so the whole thing. It becomes Oprah. The second half yeah, is like, an Oprah show between like the baby and the baby. Who wife. takes the cow? Who takes the house? <laughs> Let's put it all out. Fantastic. Well, I, well, oh, go on. I, do, I don't think the even though obviously I was lucky enough to play the bait, I, I didn't necessarily agree with everything that he did and the kind of person he was in act one. Uh-huh. And I could kind of see why the beta's wife, why the beta's wife, like, kind of did what she did. Yeah. I don't feel like he was an easy person to, to be around because I feel like he was just always stressful, wanting to do everything by himself, mm-hmm. and would never obviously let the beta's wife like get involved with it. He was always like, "No, you go home. I'm doing this. Yeah, this is my responsibility." Whereas I feel like for the beta as well, I feel like he would. Go into some sort of like, not mean, not try to make it too deep, but I think it would really, really go into a sense of hatred and maybe like a sort of depression there because obviously he's had this curse set upon him because of his father's actions, which isn't yeah. necessarily fair on him. But now his father's actions has caused him not having a child. So I feel like he'd feel like at that point the whole world is literally against him because yeah, don't do that. The evil witch. 
probably that. Yeah. Um, so that brings us on nicely to question two that I've got for you, which is similar, but it takes a show twisting the what if moment a bit later on in the show, which is what would happen if the baker's wife didn't get killed, spoiler alert, and the <laughs> baker discovers he's been cheated on. The baker had killed her. The baker would have killed her. <laughs> <Women's rolling pin. laughs> Come here. And it turns into it turns into a oh damn it for the act two. And then we'll get the classic song time <laughs> lyric. I needed you, but now I'll need you. <laughs> rubbing her with his thumbs. <laughs> Something like that, maybe. So you think I, feel, he... I, feel like, I feel like we'd have another addition to your fault. So it'd probably make the song even harder. So it's your <laughs> fault. You start with the print, it's your fault. <laughs> maybe the baker would become a secret barber and take his revenge on it. <laughs> Start. Call up his mate remember. Sweeney Todd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ben, it's me, Barker. Oh wait, no, Baker. It's Baker me, and Barker. <laughs> Baker and Barker. There you go. That's the new pie and um barber shop. But it's the bread <laughs> shop instead. <laughs> this went a really weird direction. I didn't think it would go this comical. It's taking a turn. It's taking a turn already. We're only on the second point. We're only on the second one, right. So, so we're saying what? that the baker's gonna become an evil murderer of his wife because he's found out that she's cheated on him with the prince. Can we blame the wife for wanting the prince? Uh, well, I know, but killing is still a bit extreme. True. I, d- I don't know. I don't know what I think happened. You know, I reckon this is good properly out there. I reckon the beta would die. Really? Yeah, because right. I feel like you'd just be like, uh, as I was saying before. Obviously, he's had all these things that have just brought him down, brought him down. Mm-hmm. Then that's like the final thingy. Uh, right? And he was just yeah. like, nah. And like, literally, it's like to the giant, look, I've got nothing else. To think. Just, just stamp on the head. Yeah, just do oh, it. Really? Just... So let's just walk it through then. So the, the female giant has walked past Baker's wife, narrowly missing her with a heel. She's gone, oof, that was a big gust of wind. <laughs> as the foot stunk next to her. But now she's shrouded in guilt because she's just made out and probably done more things with the prince in the woods. So she's gone back to her husband and said, listen, mate, I know you're barren and I'm a bit of a cheat. Can you forgive me? And he's going to go, <laughs> no, and cry, run off to the giant, the big well, the boy or the girl. Oh, the girl, one. the boy one's dead. Mm. i tell you what, I, I don't reckon, it, I reckon the Beatrice Rape character wouldn't be the one to say it. Do you know in, oh. the, in the performance how um, the bird... Can you remember I say something to Cinderella and it's like around yeah. that and she like looks at the beta and she go and like she's like, oh right, and you can, like it's kinda Oh, and you like what what what's the bird just said? Yeah, like it's, it's I, I think, maybe maybe in that version, uh-huh. like you can see the beta's wife like, oh god. And then the and then Cinderella's just like, You've done this to him and uh-huh. <laughs> and well, then maybe you have like the another Another Cinderella Baker's wife scene, and the ba- the Baker overhears them like discussing it. Oh so, like, yeah, yeah, That'd and then like sick, it's, it's always overheard conversations. That could be another moral of the story. It's, it's uh, to people's conversation. We very quickly turned into the woods into an episode of Hollyoaks, which is uh, <laughs> <laughs> worrying. Stephen Sunday, if you, if it, it ever comes out that you listen to this and you want, and you think this story's interesting, then. Well, happy to take a commission in it. So. <laughs> I'm sure he's got time. <laughs> anyway, um, right. So let's uh, let's press on with the third question, the final into the woods question before we switch shows and make another complete tangent journey. And um, but this one's a bit more vague. So this moment is going to happen uh, in Act One, where the witch has been given the beans by the couple, and she's gone no, and she throws them, and the piano does this. <laughs> And the beans fly away. I hope that worked <laughs> on the recording. Um, and obviously in the show, what happens is those beans grow into the beanstalk. But let's imagine that they don't sprout. The birds eat them or they become rotten and just don't grow into a beanstalk. How does that affect the show? There's no giant that can get down. and There's no jack that can get up. You can't sing Giants in the Sky. What are we going to do? Our belt is gone. That, that was gonna, that's what I was going to say. I feel like in that case, the um, character who... That situation's more most interesting for is Jack, because huh. obviously he's, he's always trying to, like, kind of like do something more extreme, more extreme, and just to like prove himself, kind of thing. Huh. So, 
in that case, like, yeah, I feel like his journey completely stops. Like, maybe there's an end point where he's like, I can't do any more because obviously the, the end point for him was getting up there and obviously <laughs> watching, like, making friends with the giant and then seeing that the the man giant, had, or the female giant had crushed another one or something and then... Uh-huh. I also just remember that it was Cinderella that threw the beans, not the witch. So there you go. The first <laughs> the so, so yeah, but anyway, it doesn't make a difference to the outcome. Um, yeah, I think Jack's story does change dramatically, doesn't it? If he can't get up the beanstalk, he's just stuck in poverty. Like there's no gold, gold hen or harp. And he's down a cow. And he's down a cow. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his mother going, there are bugs on her dogs. And her eyes in her eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, well. So, and then I guess no giant, no getting crushed Baker's wife. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh huh. And no Rapunzel getting killed. Well, there's no into the woods, is <laughs> yeah. no, The woods are it's, I'm getting it's flattened. Surprisingly, surprisingly reliant upon that giant coming down on that beanstalk, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the whole premise reliant is taken away. On the, one, the one uncastable character we're so reliant on. It was just every production is just a pair of feet on the stage. <laughs> They usually use one of my shoes. They're big enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic. Right. Well, um, have we had enough for Into the Woods? Should we switch shows for a bit and change tack? I'll tell you what, I think our vision of Into the Woods is, is so fun. <laughs> you know, should we just do it anyway? But, you you wouldn't know. know where it's going yeah. next. I'd, has anyone ever seen Showstoppers? Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is obviously the, the improvised yeah. musical where they take all the suggestions for storyline and style and uh, from the audience. Mm-hmm. I think we should go to a showstoppers and just throw suggestions like that in and see uh-huh. see if they can do it. And just duct tape all the other people in the audience's mouths so we get our idea. Because yeah. not, <laughs> not having a half hearted <laughs> attempt, you want the full version. <laughs> when I went to see it, it was uh it was drag queens uh-huh. in the Oval Office in Washington, um, and it was in the style of Gershwin. Amazing. Oh jeez. <laughs> the weirdest thing I've ever watched. <laughs> what one, oh, we saw one, but it wasn't as interesting as that. It was like a Harry Potter one, and I can't remember the other. Oh, business. and somebody wanted somebody wanted Hamilton in the middle. So to end the first half, they did Gershwin all the way through, and then did Hamilton in the middle. Wow, <laughs> fantastic! I would love to do that. You know, I think because we used to play a game um, where we play pick a subject, pick a composer, and then I'd play in the style of the composer, and they'd have to make up a song about that subject on the spot. And that was a, I think we'd be good at that. You know, we should try that one day. That could be a new nest venture. Improvised nest. Improvised nest. Or not. You know? <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd do that. Take it up the fringe. Take it to the fringe. I'll tell you, that'll be perfect. Well, when it reopens, we'll, we'll apply. I'm sure they'll love that. A bit of improvised on time. Right, well, let's switch tack then. So we start with Into the Woods, and we've gone really dark with that, even darker than it already is. Um, so let's stick with the dark theme and switch to the darkest of dark shows, oh, Sweeney Todd. The Demon Marble of Fleet Street. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what Um So I'm going to start off with a big bombshell. Now, there's a massive spoiler coming here. So if you haven't seen the show, I don't know why you listen to a Sondheim podcast. If, but... if you haven't listened to the show, where have you been? Because this, this isn't a recent spoiler. <laughs> True. <laughs> no one knows this. Uh, I think, you know, well, before I say it, it's the question. First time I saw this, I didn't realize Lucy was, um, was his wife. Like, even after we said, Lucy, <laughs> I was like, what? I just forgot. It was, it was a film that I saw first. I was like, I don't get this at all. I don't like it. And then I watched the actual production. I was like, oh, fair enough. Makes sense. So there you go. I've not watched the film. It's all right. Yeah, it's, not, it's, really, it's the best, like, movie adaptation of a musical, I would I would say, in my opinion. Because mm. there's enough of it still left from the show that you're like, oh, yeah, makes sense. But I was just na- naive when I watched this. Anyway, <laughs> we digress. The question for you is this. What would happen if Sweeney Todd recognises Lucy? Adam? That's a really hard one. Um, are, we, are, we, are we talking about straight away? Is when, when Anthony, when him and Anthony get off the boat? Obviously. We pick a t- I think let's pick a time a bit later because... It, that means at least some of the show can happen. Yeah. Rather than the overture, the first song, and that's it. Well, so let's, why don't we pick the time? Even even when... just go, even just going a tiny bit later, then yeah, it yeah. brings the love it perspective well, into yeah. the question because obviously 
love uh, love it or when she talks about Lucy, it's always quite negative about like yeah. uh, there's a barber and his wife. Like she obviously reprises the, the song that he's just sang uh, Tad earlier, and then obviously at the end it tells quite jealous, like because yeah. obviously she knows she knows it. And obviously, she's even trying to dispose end, the body. Like, yeah, she tries to dispose the body, doesn't she? Yeah, and um, yeah. so I feel like straight away, maybe Sweeney's first reaction is to go straight to. Obviously, you'd be like, "Oh my god, Lucy, I, d- I didn't know that this is what you became and that." But then I think feel like his first reaction would be going straight to love it and being like, mm-hmm. kind of like what he does at the end. But maybe that could be what turns him into a killer. Because yeah. he's had this massive lie that his wife's been in front of him all this time, and he's been like rude to her. Because obviously, when he's with Anthony, he's like, "Be off, be off, like get away from us." But uh, yeah. maybe that could have been the de- the demon man who knew that his wife is alive. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Um, I don't. Think? I don't think he'd have uh, become a raving murderer personally. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think, but then again, that also depends on you know what's what's his wife like now in her own head and in her own mental state. Like, is she in a is she in a state of being to sort of bring him back? I don't know. If, well, she's, she's, she's realized she's been poisoned. She, she's now mental. Like, she yeah. is mental now. So she's not the same Lucy that he left. That's the thing. Yeah. So you see, maybe if he saw a if he noticed that from the start that she was in that state and that she was in that state for a, for those reasons, maybe that would have just sent him over the edge anyway. Yeah. Maybe he would have gone down the same path because he would have then set out for revenge because he's seen his wife in that state. Uh-huh. So I think I, it would have gone the same way. I think the, the moment for me that would be a great recognition point is the moment where Sweeney confronts Lucy in the barbershop just before the judge is about to get his, well, to be killed. And... Um, and imagine, like, if he recognizes her in that moment and says, Lucy, and she's like, Ben. And then the judge bursts in and like, the two of them are together, alive. And then, like, I don't know, I would see it as the judge, like, them getting a bit of, you know, a bit aggy with each other, Benjamin and the judge. And the judge could, like, whip a gun out, be like, you, you're back and kill him. Kill Benjamin Barker. And then Lucy could be like, Kill him and stuff, and like kill the judge, and like, and, like just leaps on him like a little the, goblin, stab him. Yeah, and like, and then have the reverse as the ending. So then Lucy's looking at Sweeney's body. It could be as no even more tragic. Ooh. There you go. There's my two pence worth. My tuppence worth. Love it or hate it. <laughs> yes, or it. Sweeney marries the judge, and they just sack Lucy off. <laughs> twenty twenty. <laughs> Why not? Um, all right. Well, let's go to question two then. Now, this question is a big, uh, a big twist. So let's see what you come up with. The question is this: What would happen if the judge decided to grow a beard? So he wasn't going for his haircut because he wants to grow it out and become a, a wise old judge. I don't know why having a beard makes him more wise, but it does. So, so then he's happened? got no reason to visit the barber. Yeah, how is Sweeney going to get his revenge? Because he's not going to stumble across him. But then it's still... It's, it, it, there could still be, like, a bit of um, animosity between Sweeney and the judge because it still doesn't change to the part that Anthony's going for Joanna. Yeah, true. And obviously, so then... I know Anthony... I know uh, Sweeney Todd, like, kind of, like, gets... Uh, puts Anthony in it kind of thing because he tells the judge where he's, that he's going to get like Joanna from Fogs. Yeah. Um. But then at that point it could be like, oh, Mr. Todd, there's like this man who is, is doing these things that like he's trying, he's lusting over his over his daughter. And then it could be some animosity there, and then yeah, he could because. It's, it's the same thing still happened before. It's obviously all the stuff with Lucy still happened. Yeah. This. And then they could recognise each other there. That's a that's a long shot, though. That's a, a good idea. Well thought out, Adam. I'm impressed. That's really Thank good. <laughs> I think you should send Anthony in with, like, a little knife and be like, yeah, Anthony, <laughs> I, I know what the judge is doing. And he's not getting a beard cut. So 
have this knife. <laughs> it goes <laughs> cut. And, it goes cut and price. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I don't, I mean, I, I'm laughing as if I got the reference. I'm sure it's a reference that you'll understand, Colin. It's a uh, yeah. I didn't. This is a Sundown podcast, and we've just brought references from video games into it. <laughs> Fantastic! I mean, we are diverse, right? For those of you who don't know, Captain Price is a grizzled SAS veteran in a video game. <laughs> He's got this really sort of what? That's, <laughs> that's including me, then. All right. Well, that is um. It's good to know. Um, well, in that case, let's let's move on from um, Captain Price <laughs> to our last question. This is potentially the most interesting question I've come up with, I think. And it is this. What would happen if Sweeney Todd, or Benjamin Barker, was not a barber? So if he had a different profession, how is he going to execute um, his revenge and execute the judge? So if everything else is the same in the story, mm. just his job's different, that's all. If you link that in with the judge not wanting to grow a beard, I mean, he's of an age where he might need a private doctor. So, you know, right. Sweeney could sort of use that facade so, as a private doctor to get that's into That's a good the idea, that. Yeah. The backstory of Sweeney, let's bear in mind, is that he was arrested at 14 for theft. He's then been arrested and deported for other crimes, having had a child by then. And now he's come back. And the only way, the way he learned his barbary was in prison while away. Um, so he has to, the skill has to be acquired whilst in a prison. There's your, there's something to think about. Oh, God. Well, I mean, it just depends on what you can learn in prisons at that time. I mean, you can learn <laughs> all sorts in prison now. I mean, you're speaking from experience? Or? Well, no, I've never been. <laughs> I've watched the documentaries. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> and that. I watched Porridge with uh, Ronnie Barker. That was <laughs> oh. all sorts. I remember Porridge. <sighs> Love it. All right, well, I'll throw one out there and see what you think, right? So let's let's take it down another Sondheim route. Let's assume Benjamin Barker, Barker goes to prison and meets a decrepit Georges Chirac Jr. and becomes an artist. Oh, like a pot? Yeah. So he He's could do portrait portraits artist. for all these yeah. big wigs. Yeah. So what's going to happen now? He comes back to London. He's got his easel in one hand, his brush in the other, a bit of paint spattered on his face. Looks he meet, a bit red. He meets, he meets someone called Stripes. In the, in the head off. <laughs> yeah, so like when he when he's positioning when you position someone to do a portrait, you could go up behind them with a like a, a wire. Yeah. Oh, and then strangle ooh. them to death. Goodness me, Carl. <laughs> this side of you come from. It's silent. You work in Build a Bear normally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you think the judge? I can't do it. Do you think the judges want to get a street portrait? I can't see him. Like, oh, um, I think I want my picture painting with massive nose and large buck teeth. No, but like, um, but I reckon the like Sweeney could use that as a, a thing to get in in there, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, get into their houses. Yeah, because it I've takes. Got, I've ages. got these lovely paintings. Do you want to buy one? <laughs> do you know my friend, Pricey? <laughs> with a wire I was gonna go with the um, suggestion of get a uh, paintbrush either side of his head and split his eardrums you know oh. with one I'll gesture <laughs> yeah. should we get um, a violence warning on this podcast is there anyone doing no do I don't want any forms of warnings on this podcast right, I don't well, wanna, I don't want to bleep out language don't want to talk about coronavirus <laughs> <And I> don't <laughs> want to put any form of warning at the start all right, well, let's just assume that we can talk about that. It's fine. I'm sure that'd be fine. It's all fictional, yeah, so... what we're saying. It's, it's, so he's... it's not actually going to happen. He's either going to become a garotta or some sort of weird brain scrambler with paintbrushes. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, we definitely changed up Sweeney Todd. And we've also changed him into the woods, which has been good. And I think at the start, we even crossed them over. I think we, yeah. Barker and Baker. Barker and Baker. That's the new one. That's that's the Sondheim sequel to both. <laughs> Maybe, oh. maybe, maybe Sweeney got deported to the forest of Into the Woods. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Happens. And then he goes back. <laughs> and then he leaves at the end. And then it's just, it's a straight Wait, leading. Does that mean the baker's wife is Lucy who cheats with the judge who is Cinderella's prince? Oh, what the, This is good. <laughs> No, no, my mind's blown now. That's, uh, that's, that's just too, too, too much for me to handle. It's too much on time for this time of night. We've done well, though. Um, well, that's all my questions. So uh, I think we should probably wrap it up there. Um, thank you, Adam Donaldson, company manager, uh, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having us. I've really enjoyed it. 
and Callum James Dunwell, our technical supervisor or manager? Which, I, both. Why not? <laughs> the incredible technical supervisor, Callum James Dunwell. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Busy schedule. Um, I know you're off doing things in Lanzarote at the minute, so um, we appreciate yeah. having you here. Um, Singing Sweet family. Caroline and telling really bad cheesy jokes. Have you got any Sweeney in your set? <laughs> I don't have any Sweeney in my set. I don't think it would go down the same way it would in front of a musical theatre crowd, I must say. <laughs> if I just came out with my eyes, like, just, just darkened underneath. Just my really pale. Again, the tile of Sweeney Todd. <laughs> just imagine coming out with Sweeney Todd. I think they'd is... go, can you do, like, Country Roads? Or, no. <laughs> this is sort of me second dark. There's a hole in the world with a big pet, Pete. <laughs> 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 the black pit is the crowd that have now left. <laughs> I don't want to hear Sweeney and Lanzarote. I'd pay to see Sweeney and Lanzarote. So that's <laughs> too bad. Anyway, cool. Well, that has been episode three. So join us next week for episode four. Um, I won't reveal what the subject is because it's a great one and it's a big surprise. So I hope to see you there or not see you there, but hear you there. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you to our guests and good night. Good night.